Hello, this is Sam from Unreal Madness, and today I'm going to be t doing a tutorial on how to do a teleportation ability for the character in game. Now, as you can see here, it's a new project starting off. Now, this can be probably used for anything, because it's like third person or first person, but for now, I'm only going to use um, the first person. So, it's straight off from the example, so you don't need to download anything. Okay, so now we're in the first person template. The character's right there. So what we're going to do is we are going to go onto the character blueprint and ignore all these for the second. And we're going to create a new function. I'd rather have it as a function. So we're going to call it teleport. Now let's start off with a basic one then. So if we just do say up and down, so we teleport, you know, up up and down. So you just t drag it off, type in teleport. And drag that off there. And what we want to do is we want to drag this destination location off and type in a get actor location. Now, all this will do, this will teleport the actor to the actor location. We don't really want that, do we? So if we drag that off and type in plus plus and click on vector plus vector and, and connect that back up there for the Z, we want the character to go up. So we type in 500, then he will move up 500. Now, if we want the character to go down, if we create another teleport. And for this, we're going to need a branch, to be honest. So we type in branch. And we want to make a new variable, a boolean called is crouch. Now, the first person um, template doesn't have a crouch feature, but this will still work in the same context if the cra character was actually crouching. So what we want to do is we want to select true to down here and false for up here. Drag that off, get that. Okay, so now a setup, what we want to do is we want to go to the event graph and um, we want to activate the ability. So if I, if I want one as an activation ability, then what we can do is for impress type in teleport. So you get the cool function teleport. So now that will activate um, the function teleport. So for the crouch feature, if we type in um, left CTRL, which will bring up, which is basically left control on your keyboard, usually the crouch button, or whichever button you want to have as your crouch button. So for this, what we want to do is we want to get is crouched, and we want to set that, and we want to copy and paste that. So when pressed, we want it to set crouched, and when released, we want it to unset crouched. So what that will do is that will basically operate the um, the branch here. Let's drag it down, and if we just uh, copy that, paste that, drag that up, and then just put down minus 300. Reason we're doing 300 is we don't want the character to accidentally um, get stuck into the floor below, like the platform he's actually standing on. So we want to set it to 300 because that will drop us quite a far bit, but still leave enough room for the character to make sure he's not stuck. Um, yeah, I believe we can actually test that now. Uh, if we come out of this, okay, well, let's select the floor, copy and paste the floor, bring the floor up. Um, Bit higher. Okay, so yeah, there we go. So we teleport up now. Teleport down. There we go. It worked completely perfectly. So now that is set up. Then what we want to do is we really we want to set them. Actually, what we want to do is we don't want the play to accidentally um, activate this. So we do a. 
branch, another branch, and type in is fallen. Let's just check that quick. Pressing one, nothing. Jump. Okay, good. That works fine. So with this next feature now, and what we want to do is we want to add, be able to teleport forwards, backwards, left, and right as well. So for this, we're going to need to add a component, and let me maximize that. We want to add a component. We want to type in scene, um, a scene component. So for this, we just want to we want to have four of those, of front, front, rear, left, and right. So with this now, we do rename that to left, rename that to forward, rename that to right, and rename that to back. What we, want to do, what we want to do is we want to set it so it goes 500 left, 500 right, 500 forward, and 500, um, 500 back. So if you go up to here and you do the Y value, make sure it's the minus and do 500. Now, if we do the right one, um, all we have to do here for the Y value is to do 500. So that separates it that way. So left forward. Um, that's the x axis, so we just need to type in 500. And back, we just need to do minus 500. So now that is all set up, so we can easily get the teleport feature from that. So with this now is. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to just drag this out a little bit, and we want to go from this branch to a false. And what we want to type in there is another branch. And. That branch is true. We want to type in teleport, and for this, yeah, let's do the forward one first. Type in forward. Now we want to get get world location because it's always attached to the character. So no matter where the character moves around, it will still be attached, and it will always get a lo world location. So we attach that to a destination. Set that to the destination, and then I believe we're done. Oh yeah, one more thing. Um, what we want to do is we want to right-click, get, move forward, and what I'll do is I'll get the. Um, I'll get you know when a character moves forward, it will it will activate it. So we want to do an equals equals. Where is it? Equals equals, and we want to do it to a equals equals float or equal float drag that off and type in one in that so that what basically means is when a character is moving full forward it will then um, send the condition to true and when he's not it will send it to false so now that is set up if we go down to branch another branch and if we type in actually we can just copy all that except for forward Copy and paste, and false. Go down to the branch, and then get load world location. And what we want to do is we want to get back. So bring back in, connect up to get world location. Um, for this, make it um, make it a bit bigger for you. For this, what we want to do is we want to type in minus one, because that's when the character is going backwards. So forward. Uh, so one is forward. Zero is standing still. Minus one is going backwards. So, get world location back. Okay, I think that is all sorted now. So if we paste that again, and do false, connect, uh, teleport, and we want to get left. So with the left function is, Yeah, so the left function is you want to delete get move forward. And you want to type in get move right. And you want 
type that in. You want to type in minus one because it's going left. Because we're going full left, so you want to. So full minus one is full left. Zero is standing still. One is moving full right. So what this now is okay. That is actually set up well. So if we paste it again, drag it down, and delete. Get move right. And we want to do minus one. No, sorry, one. Because the character is going right. Um, for what location, we want to bring in the right scene component and connect that up. So, I believe that is correct now. Let's try that. So, forward, back, left, right, jump, crouch. Okay, so now that is all sort of tidy. Um, one thing I want to do is because I can do, is I want to spawn an emitter. And what this will do is this will just add a bit of animation to it, so it will look, you know, a bit nicer, shall I say. So, for this, we want to add in another scene component. So we go to component, scene. We're going to add that in, click on viewport. And for this component is where the emitter will spawn. So we just move that out a little bit. Probably a little bit up so it's in front of the camera view. And then when we go on to this, if we just click off one of these and say spawn emitter at location, and we type down, let, um, let's do explosion. For location, if we bring in the scene component that we just made, and then get world location, then connect the vector up to the location. And then that will spawn the emitter. Now, all we've got to do now is connect up all of these into the same command. So, connect and connect. So, compile. Oh, it's compiled your blueprints. Play. Let's try it. Okay. Oh, maybe. Maybe a bit more forward and a bit more up. Um, I think I forgot to connect one up. Yes, there we go. The crouch. Um, the teleport underneath function. So I saw spawn a bit, and that is all set up. Um. Right. There we go, it's much better. Obviously, with this, you can teleport through objects. Now, the one thing is that you can spam this pretty well. And, you know, you can. We don't want to spam it. So, if you're only after how to do the teleport. So, you got the teleport now. This is for people who want to know how to actually prevent it from being spammed. Okay, so now what we want to do is to do this, we want to go into the event graph and um, we want to make a custom event. And the reason we're doing this is that so we can... Uh, add custom event. So we can call this event at any time in the level blueprint, which will come in extremely handy. So we want to call that, let's say, um, refresh. So we want to call it refresh. So with this now, we want to make a boolean called refresh as well. Okay, we can't call it the same. Refresh ability. And we want to drag that out and we want to set that. So when refresh ability is on, I'll show you how it all connects now. So when a fresh ability is on, we want to have a delay. And this will be the delay that will delay until the next ability can be used basically so if we do delay and then if we do copy and paste so we set ability again we want to turn that off so refresh ability off I've, yeah that's all set up now so if we go to our teleport function 
and if we do drag off actually we can just do it on the end so we want to call this event that we just made here the custom event so we go to drag off type in refresh and you get the call function refresh so that will refresh now what we want to do is we want to add a branch right here and with this branch we want to get refreshability um, we don't want it to be true we want it to be false so right now so every time we activate the ability it will take three seconds before we can reactivate it so if we try that now so let's see one two three there we go so now it's only taking three seconds to refresh the ability which will pre present yeah prevent a lot of spam in your levels um, so there we go now you know how to create a basic teleportation ability um, if this has helped you at all or any part don't forget to hit that subscribe button for future tutorials and do not forget to like the video if it has also helped you if it hasn't you're more than welcome enough to click the dislike but that's entirely up to you so until next time